Carnivore day of eating. So you guys ask a lot of questions in regards to Frank, should I salt my food? Frank, should I do this? Should I do that? I want to show you guys what I do in regards to my eating as well as other routines during the day. I will do a separate day in the life where I'll go into my hygiene and things like that. But this video is going to focus around how I actually prepare my foods, what I eat, and also like for you guys asking about supplements, vitamin D3, I'll try to touch on those things in this video as well. But uh, first thing I do when I want to eat is I warm up my grill. Sometimes I even turn my grill on before I go out to pick up some more meat. Uh, I usually do buy from meat purveyors and stuff, but lately I've been buying from the supermarket. I did just finish chopping up some wood here. Uh, this is just, I just go to like Home Depot and Sam's and buy some hardwood bundles for five or six bucks. That usually lasts me a couple weeks worth of wood. And sometimes I do get a quart of wood delivered, but it's a, it's a lot of work to, to hustle back about 300 pounds of wood back here. So I, I might do that again, I might not. But anyway, so this is my gas grill. First thing I do is I, I turn the burners off and I turn the gas on so the gas builds up in the line. What that does is it will shoot any ash out that's in the line right now. The reason this is important is because the wood doesn't usually clog up burners, but if you use charcoal, it does. But this is my setup. You guys could see I actually have some old grates on the bottom resting on the burners so I could lay wood on top of those grates. And all, I only really need, especially since there's some pieces from yesterday, all I really need is, you know, there should be plenty of wood. I'm actually going to grill some chicken for my family too, so I put a little extra wood in here just so I can get the job done quicker. But this is usually about twice as much wood as I use. So now the gas built up in the line, I turn the gas on. Lights pretty fast. So I'm gonna let this go for you know probably five, 10 minutes. And while this is going, we're gonna go inside and prep some food. So for today, I had to buy some extra muscle meat. So I went to buy some shoulder blade lamb chops from the supermarket. These were, these were like six fifty dollars a pound. Usually, I, I try not to pay more than 7 or $8 a pound for whatever muscle meat I'm buying, even grass-fed. And here I just got, I got some chicken feet and some chicken thighs for some chicken stock in my family later. That's unrelated, but I will throw these thighs on the grill. So, I gotta go downstairs and grab some fat and stuff, but before we do that, uh, I don't usually, not usually, I never season my food before I cook it if I'm cooking for myself. Uh, I'm going to publish a New York City style steakhouse video. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be before or after this, but in that video, you see me heavily season the steak with black pepper and salt before I cook it. I prefer to season after if I cook it for myself. That's usually for presentation, but I'm just going to use salt. And we'll go over the salts later when I'm actually eating. So let's go downstairs and we'll get... Uh, we got to get... Actually, I need a bigger... I need another... Okay, so I'm done in my garage, and this is my meat fridge. All I really have in here right now is some lamb fat just resting on racks. Just slabs of lamb trim fat I get from the supermarket for like $1.50, $2 a pound. This has been in here for I think like a week or two now. You know, the outside dries so it uh, kind of prevents uh, it from really... It's almost like dry... I'm pretty much dry aging some lamb fat here. So even after one or two weeks, the flavor's not going to change much, but we're going to get enough fat for like two meals. I find the slabs taste better than the thick chunks. It's from a different part of the lamb. Like these slabs are almost like sweet. So most of this is resting on racks. Some of it's actually just resting on towels because I didn't have enough racks. I keep forgetting to buy some more. So I'm just gonna take, uh, that's probably enough fat for two meals. So I'm gonna go back upstairs and uh, let's get some duck liver out. I don't know, maybe it's been like 10 minutes now we got a nice fire going. Uh, I actually, I grabbed, I took out some duck liver, got about a pound of duck liver here, we're going to throw it on the grill. For those of you guys asking me if you have to eat liver raw or cooked, it's great either way. You know, by cooking it, you mainly lose some B vitamins and small amounts of the other vitamins, and I guess a bit of vitamin C, but not that big of a deal. I always grill the fat first because it gets the flames going really well. I 
I mean, Eskimos literally used to use fat to burn uh, burn lamps. So you guys will see how. Uh, the nice thing is this fat is really dry on the outside because it's been resting on the racks. So it's going to crisp up really easily and fast. That piece is burning a bit. So, cook, cooking fat, getting fat crispy without burning it on a fire like this can be a little difficult sometimes. But now you guys can see when I put that fat on, now we're getting a little, fire's getting much higher. See, now we're getting really crazy. Now I'm going to turn the gas off before we get too crazy. Got crispy piece dripping with fat. Crispy piece. This piece is still a little raw on the inside, so maybe we'll let it go a little longer. Crispy piece. So I usually just crisp it on the outside and try to leave the middle raw. But what makes this really delicious is when I get it nice and crisp. Now I'm going to throw the, the lamb chops on. Now that the grill's really hot and, and lubricated with the fat. The only thing to keep in mind, guys, is if your meat is really lean and not fatty, you definitely want something to baste it with just to make sure the, the heat distributes evenly. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to get grill marks and brown crust. What you end up doing is you end up steaming the meat. It doesn't matter how hot the grill is. If there's no fat on the grill or the meat, it's not going to brown. It's not going to brown. I think I'm gonna keep this video in real time, guys, when I'm cooking and eating, just because I think it's uh, it's something I haven't done before, and, I, and sometimes people ask, like, why do you keep cutting the eating, but we'll try it this time. So the temp I'm going for is raw in the middle. I really don't like it when it's cooked past that, so depending on the thickness of each chop, I take it off. Uh, fairly quickly if it's thin. Otherwise, I try to get more of a crust. But I will sacrifice the crust for keeping it raw on the inside. I'd rather have a great piece of meat that's raw on the inside than a piece of brown meat that's well done. Now, while we're finishing these up, let's talk about the liver. I prefer most of my liver raw, but duck liver and goose liver, I actually prefer cooked. So, or made into pate. So, I actually prefer to cook the duck liver in a pan and pan sear it really crispy. I like that better, but I actually don't have any fat to pan sear it with right now, so I'm gonna throw it on the grill. The only problem is, as you will see, since the duck liver is kind of lean, it's just gonna turn black. It's not gonna really crisp up. And let me just run and grab a, I'm gonna put this duck liver on the grill. I'm going to grab a new plate to put the quick ones on. And this liver will shrink. You know, you guys might think a pound of liver is a lot, but liver shrinks a lot more than other foods. And I guess putting this on the grill is better because uh, when you put these in a pan, they tend to, uh, when you put these in a pan, they tend to pop and explode, just like chicken hearts do, like chicken liver. Definitely gets grease everywhere. I mean, you guys can see my total cumulative time spent cooking is usually less than five minutes. Oh, these actually look pretty good. I mean, some of these are turning black. Yeah.
Duck liver, I usually eat raw or cooked because, uh, you know, ducks don't carry salmonella. So it's not a concern in ducks. But this is what I'm usually going for. A little bit of brown on the outside, still kind of rare in the middle. But you can see, like, sometimes it turns black really fast. Making a mess in my grill. I mean, you guys see all this sticking, like, this is why why you use fat to cook with. And if you're thinking, well, if, if the grill's hot enough, should it not stick? Yeah, but some parts of it stick and overcook, and some parts don't. So, I'm gonna cook some chicken for my family. Time, I'm gonna let this meat just rest inside and after I cook that chicken we'll eat. I was planning on telling you guys how delicious this lamb fat is but you're well you're thinking well this guy puts raw hard and eats all this disgusting stuff so why should I listen to him but I actually convinced my mother to try the lamb fat the other night and she loved it so uh, she's gonna try it again for you guys and, let, and hopefully these pieces are fairly consistent so let me try that please. How did you like it the other day? I thought it was Incredible. I think it's better than bacon. But then again, anything my son makes, I love. Turn over your hands, small piece. Ah. It's so good. You want some of your lunch later, or do you want me to leave some out? Okay. Thank you for sharing this moment. Delicious. Are we done? Yeah. I couldn't get my dad to try the lamb, unfortunately, because he detests lamb. So but if I don't know. get enough sun during the day, and this happens nine out of ten times, you know, it's not always sunny enough outside for me to get some D3 from the sun. So without going into detail about like times of the year you could tan, what time solar noon is, you know, you guys can Google those things yourself, like what the best time to tan is, UVA versus UVB. The point is, I want to get some vitamin D3 in. And this is important because vitamins A, which is found in liver and a lot of animal foods, vitamin K2, works synergistically with vitamin D3. I'm going to link a study showing that turkeys fed one or the other developed deficiencies, and then turkeys fed even incredibly large amounts of these vitamins, which would normally cause an overdose. As long as they were in equal amounts, it was fine. So it's important for me to get enough vitamin D3 every day if I'm consuming liver. So. Uh, the important thing about D3 supplements is you usually only want two ingredients, uh, cocalciferol from lanolin, which is sheep wool, and the carrier oil, like MCT oil. Now, I don't want to take this orally because the way they make this is they use solvents and hexane to extract D3 from lanolin. So I figure doing this transdermally is better than ingesting the oil, uh, you know, for what that's worth at least. But this is what I basically do. I take uh, one full dropper of this is 4,000 IU. So I usually do two half droppers throughout the day, and then I just take it and I rub it on my stomach, mainly because I figure like, if there's going to be a spot on your body where the D3 absorbs the best, it's going to be by your intestines, by that fat, by that stomach area. And I, I, I definitely know it works transdermally, it probably just as effectively as it does orally. And if anything, it works better transdermally because that's how our bodies are supposed to absorb it. You just gotta be careful with not taking too much at once. Like I know they sell some drops that are like five to 10,000 IU of D3 per drop. You kinda wanna split it over the course of the day, ideally. But the point is, get enough D3 in comparison to vitamin A. And you know, you guys are saying like, I'm getting insomnia from cod liver oil. I'm getting really weird dreams. This is part of the reason you need, you need to get D3 with. You know, if your fat soluble vitamin intake is out of whack, and I should really do a whole video on this, if it's imbalanced, if you're just eating like a lot of liver without getting some sun, uh, you're definitely going to notice some problems, especially related to insomnia. Okay, so some of the main things I go over with my clients is uh, the order you eat foods during your meal. And it's very important that 
you consume organ meats and fat first to satiation. And what will probably end up happening is you'll realize you're not actually hungry for the lean muscle meat. You kind of have to almost force yourself to eat the lean muscle meat. So we're going to follow that principle. I'm going to eat liver to satiation, then I'm going to eat fat, and then we'll see. And in regards to my salt, uh, so like Himalayan salt, I could probably do a whole video on that because you guys keep asking me about it. But in regards to mineral profile, Himalayan salt and Celtic salt, if anything, Celtic salt has more of some minerals. And to me, in my tasting experience, Celtic salt tastes the best. My favorite is Eden, uh, French Celtic salt, and then the best salt overall is Fleur de Sel de Gourand, and this is for taste. Uh, the Celtic salt is probably better for minerals, but Fleur de Sel de Gourand is a DOC in France. It's the most famous salt in the world. It's this salt, when you put it on food, no other salt tastes as salty for the amount. So this is a great way to reduce your sodium content, and this is also a reason why I think people oversalt their foods. It's because the salt they're putting on their food doesn't taste salty. Um, like I'll do a comparison right now. So let's take a piece of duck liver. Let's have some without salt. That's pretty good. I can eat it just like that. Let's put the the Celtic salt on it. A little better. I like that way more. And this is a weird comparison because the Celtic salt is very fine, and these are flakes, so it might not really be a fair comparison. And I'll just put a few flakes of the Fleur de Sel on the liver. I'll do another comparison. My right, guys, there's a reason it's a DOC and there's a reason it's known as the best salt in the world. Like to me, uh, let's grab some let's grab some Mediterranean sea salt actually and let's do a comparison with that too. So the regular sea salt is pretty good. The Celtic salt is way saltier and way better. And the floaty cell is even that same notch up. Alright, so I've eaten about half a pound of duck liver so far, comparing these salts. So let's move on to the fat. Now, keep in mind, guys, before this meal, I actually wasn't too hungry, you know, but whatever. Now, we're going to eat fat to satiation, and I'd be surprised if I got past this piece. Usually, I just prefer, I use the Celtic salt for its mineral content. Uh, sometimes I use the fleur de sel to finish a little bit if I feel like it. And sometimes I'll even just do a huge black pepper crust. Like I'll show you guys that on one of the lamb chops. But on the fat I usually just put, uh, and this fat is, does have some protein on it too sometimes.
You guys have never tried lamb fat? Oh my god. After I tasted this lamb fat like this, on the fire, now I know why some people have sexual lambs. Or is that goats? I'm not sure. Dude, this fat is so crazy. So I just took another bite and my body's telling me to stop eating. Like that's enough fat. Like I don't want any more fat. So no more fat. This is the reason this order is important. I feel like I can't eat another bite. And all I've eaten so far is half a pound of duck liver and maybe not even because it lost some moisture. Quarter pound of duck liver and half a pound of lamb fat. And I feel as stuffed as I did eating six pounds of grain-fed ribeye. And not even, I guess I can't even say that. I tried Sean Baker's diet for a day and I could not s satiate my hunger eating grain-fed ribeye. I think I literally ate six pounds of ribeye that day and I was still hungry, but my stomach was bloated. Now, I feel satiated, I feel good, but we satiated the minerals and the vitamins from the liver. We satiated the fat from the, well, the fat. And, you know, our, our gallbladder has uh, bile stored to digest the fat. So our body has reached that threshold. Now, can we eat more lean protein if we wanted to, to reach maybe the, the stomach capacity threshold? Let's see. So, this is just a lamp shoulder chop. And what I do sometimes with muscle meat is... This is a two to one black peppercorn to Celtic salt mix. I grind up fresh organic Italian peppercorns in my spice grind. You guys will see this in my, uh, check out my steak cooking video, if I published it yet, uh, to see this. But this is like the classic New York City seasoning. And what I do is I take, I take, usually do more than this. I take like a handful of it and I brush it on the steak. And this kind of creates an unnatural palatability. Uh, I just thought I'd show you guys it. Like I could eat like three pounds of meat like this easily. So the cooking temper on this lamb is raw in the middle. As I said earlier, that's how I prefer it.
And guys, could I eat this raw without salt? I could. But I really don't enjoy doing that. This is actually a little too salty, so I'm gonna be thirsty later. Scoop out some marrow. And guys, if I wanted to lose weight, I could I would have just fasted. Like I wasn't hungry for this meal. I could have stopped eating after the liver, I could have stopped eating after the fat. So let's see if there's a difference in palatability with just salt instead of the salt and pepper. Maybe a slight difference. To me, it's just so interesting how each of these macronutrients and foods have different hunger satiations. You know, from the liver to the fat to the muscle meat. Like, you know, I wasn't really hungry after eating the fat and even the liver. And I'm still able to eat, you know, another pound or so of lamb muscle meat. So, uh, let's just fin we'll finish up this chop, I guess. I just think it's so interesting. Like, you eat fat and then you're, you're full, but then you can eat more muscle meat. It's something to be said about eating to fat first. For situation.
So, I ate roughly about half of what I made, and I guess we should have gone over the nutrient profile first in the meal. Now, the liver is nutritionally complete in a sense that it has all the fat soluble vitamins A, E, K, vitamin C, the water soluble vitamins B, uh, even small amounts of omega 3s, and duck liver is especially high in vitamin K2. So, we got most of our nutrients, plenty of minerals, elements from there. The, the lamb fat that we ate next was just kind of to reinforce those vitamins, get some omega-3s, a lot of omega-3s in the lamb fat. And again, I'm not, there's decent amounts of those other fat-soluble vitamins, A, K, E. Same thing with the lamb chop. Lamb chop just repeating the same vitamins that we saw in the lamb fat. And, and each of those things satiating different aspects of our hunger. Uh, we went over the Celtic salts. And there's really nothing you're missing from eating like this. Uh, in regards to other parts of the animal that you might want to incorporate, uh, you know, we did have some marrow because they're uh, these shoulder chops did have some marrow in them, so some additional omega 3. So, there's nothing we really need to add to this meal. Uh, you, you could really, I mean, if you wanted to say hypothetically, if you didn't have the marrow, maybe have some brain or incorporate some bone marrow or just high omega foods in another way. The overall cost of this meal is approximately $20 uh, maybe t uh, well that's for both meals so I'm pretty much paying $10 a meal and one of these meals is probably what you guys would eat in a day I'm just kind of picking out right now uh, I usually eat about half I usually eat about one meal like this uh, maybe I'll have another meal later I've just been trying to kind of uh, I ate some uh, I ate some grain-fed shrimp yesterday and I just wanted to get them out of my system uh, so I'm just kind of eating a lot more food than I normally do I'm eating a lot more liver too just to try to clear up my skin uh, I tried some cod liver oil from Blue Pasture the other day and I broke out like crazy so I'm trying to clear out the breakouts by eating large amounts of fresh liver so uh, maybe I'll, I'll film the second meal later for you guys just for the purpose but uh, I don't really think there's anything that I'm gonna go over later that you guys uh, need to know I mean maybe we, I mean I have a video on water talking about the type of water I drink uh, the type of electrolyte supplements I that you would use occasionally but uh, that's really it for now it's about two o'clock uh, in the afternoon and maybe we'll eat later around eight or nine o'clock I haven't eaten this in a while like and by I mean I haven't had seaweed in years but uh, seaweed is an amazing source of electrolytes and iodine and whenever I get bad acne, uh, usually I eat some salmon roe or fish to clear my skin up. And since I don't have any of that, I'm going to have a little bit of seaweed. It's going to pretty much stimulate the thing I'm missing, which is the iodine. Uh, I mean, there's even, I believe, certain forms of omega-3s in seaweed. This really is a superfood. But I think mainly the, magne the magnesium, the potassium in this is going to help clear up my skin, especially that high iodine amount. So uh, this is just low-temperature dehydrated dulse. Uh, Tastes, I mean, it doesn't taste good, but <laughs> I usually just, I usually hydrate it and then swallow it down. There's like a list of things I do when I break out that can help from hydrating to eating a lot of liver to eating seafood. Uh, all, all of those things can help me uh, clear my skin up very fast and easy tanning. And, and combining all of those aspects to me just makes my skin heal in a matter of days. I just swallow it down. I don't really like it that much. It's not bad, but... There's all different types of sea vegetables. I just had some dolls there. Kombu, wakame, kelp. There's, there's a lot of different types, and I believe they each have slightly different mineral profiles, but... Uh, it's definitely a food that I consider kind of very suitable for a carnivore diet. It removes a lot of the minerals and, and concerns and element concerns that people don't sometimes get on this diet, but uh, definitely out of the ordinary and something I don't usually do. Uh, you know, I gotta, I'm waiting to hear back from a couple of purveyors to see if I can get my own. Uh, I want to buy some fresh roe so I can cure my own caviar and have my own. I'm just trying to stay away from frozen foods because... 
I frankly am sick of paying for frozen food and the taste is just worse. There, and I've gone over the nutrient difference between frozen and fresh foods, I think, briefly on several videos, but the concern isn't actually from physically bringing the food below a certain temperature. The concern is from the oxidation, how old it is. That's where you actually lose nutrients, and it does affect the taste. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't lose enzymes. Nothing really happens in the meat. Uh, you know, I mean, the normal aging process is altered by freezing the meat, but... The, the main concern I have is just how it tastes and how old was that, you know, that meat could be in the freezer for three months. That's where we have problems with frozen meat. What's going on guys? I went down to the city for an interview, went to the gym, uh, did a couple things, just came back and ate another meal. I decided not to record it because, I mean, it was the same meal and I didn't really have anything else to talk about. So I said, what's the point? Uh, maybe next, next time I do a day of eating, I'll do two different meals. I just had to throw out some fat that was stale and uh, my family was down here watching TV, so I didn't want to kick them out and film. Uh, but I guess I could touch on, this is my, if you guys didn't watch my water video, my uh, most recent electrolyte video, uh, this looks like milk, but this is actually cow and clay and water. And this is what I use to hydrate between meals and throughout the day. Clay is an excellent source of trace minerals. It's a natural source of them. And what I've noticed is normally where I'm thirsty for two or three glasses of water, if I put clay in the water, it changes that to like half a glass to one glass of water. So definitely something to be said about mineral supplementation, whether it's clay or seaweed. Guys, I messed around a lot with magnesium and potassium, and in all my experience, the natural foods like seaweed and clay are definitely the way to go. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. If you guys would like to support me, please just share the channel. If you guys are having problems with your diet from anything from sourcing food to not knowing if you're getting enough omega-3s in the diet, maybe you're having a hard time figuring out if you're getting enough sun exposure, maybe some blood work didn't look right, you know, feel free to reach out to me for a consultation. Uh, you can shoot me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com. And uh, if you guys do have a problem and it's one or two questions, I usually just answer that for free. Leave a comment below, shoot me an email, that's no big deal. But if you guys would like to see any specific videos, just leave a comment below, uh, let me know. I do have quite a long list, but things that take priority and things that I think are really popular kind of just kind of go to the front.